What's up guys, I'm Nobody Special. With the recent spike in energy prices and the ensuing industrial shutdowns in Europe and China, we're starting to see shortages of a lot of the chemicals and materials that go into making fertilizer. And this is resulting in some tough decisions for farmers that they're going to have to make in the coming months. And while this may result in an across-the-board increase in food prices, there's a couple of commodities in particular here in the United States that might be affected. You ready? Hit it. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jack Gamble and I'm nobody special. And the recent increase in the cost of natural gas has caused a resultant increase in the cost of fertilizer and namely the materials that go into fertilizer such as anhydrous ammonia. And a lot of facilities that produce these materials in Europe and China are shutting down causing many to speculate that the price of fertilizer is going to increase even further in the not too distant future. And this is placing farmers in a tough position. They need to make the decision on what they're going to plant next year. With fertilizer costs on the rise and nobody knowing how bad it could get between now and the spring, it has a lot of farmers deciding maybe they should plant more soybeans and less corn. Now the reason for that is simple. Corn, or as my father likes to call it, see him again, uses much more fertilizer than soybeans does. And with the increase in cost in fertilizer, a lot of farmers are deciding that they're going to plant more soybeans next year instead of more corn. Now before we get into the details of this one, guys, I have to ask you, please, could you give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell? It really helps me out, and I'd be forever in your debt. And with that, let's get into this a little bit. First of all, some quick biology. Soybeans does not require as much fertilizer because the plant the soybeans grow on has this symbiotic relationship with a bacteria that lives in the soil, and this allows soybean to extract most of the nitrogen that it needs from the air without having to be supplemented by any kind of fertilizers, whereas corn is a very fertilizer intensive product that doesn't have that symbiotic relationship with the bacteria in the soil so all the nitrogen that goes into the corn plant has to be taken from the soil not from the air and this means corn has a much higher input cost when it comes to fertilizer than soybeans do and to a lesser extent wheat okay now that the biology lesson is over let's get into some of these articles and with that we are going to shrink my big fat fertilized melon of a head get into some of these articles. This is from the Great Ben Tribune. This is published October 11th, talking about rising fertilizer prices explained. We're going to fast forward through a bunch of it, but I want to get into these few paragraphs in particular. Let's zoom in for Mrs. Special. All fertilizer prices are affected by increased transportation costs, especially those imported involving overseas transportation, and supply chain shortages are involved. This also applies to many pesticides. The most significant increase involves nitrogen. Nitrogen fertilizers are first produced as anhydrous ammonia. All other forms derive from anhydrous. This makes anhydrous the cheapest source. Yet even anhydrous is up. Last December, it was around $440 a ton, while this week, it's almost $800 a ton. Now, this is dated on the 11th. The price has gone up even further since then. The reason is simple. While you only need atmospheric nitrogen as your nitrogen source, you also need large quantities of natural gas and huge amounts of power in the form of electricity to generate the temperatures and pressures for nitrogen gas conversion to ammonia. We're all aware of the price increases here. So this is saying it is because of the natural gas price increases and the energy price increases that is causing the price of anhydrous ammonia and thus nitrogen fertilizer to increase. Now the result of this is pretty clear cut. And this is in Bloomberg. Fertilizer price shock threatens to slash U.S. corn profits. This is dated the 21st. Skyrocketing fertilizer prices could lead U.S. corn profits to drop by about a quarter next year, potentially motivating farmers to shift millions of acres into less cost-intensive soybeans. That's according to Terry Rogensack, agriculture specialist and co-owner of the Hightower Report. He predicts corn returns on an operating cost basis for producers in the U.S., the world's biggest producer, could plummet to roughly $430 an acre. That compares with about $600 this year. So the profitability for corn farmers is going down because of this big increase in fertilizer prices, and corn is your most fertilizer-intensive crop. But Terry Rogensack is not the only agriculture specialist making this call. Let's look at this article in WNAX Radio 570. This is posted today. Farmers to plant more beans, less corn with high fertilizer prices. Farmers in the Western Corn Belt may shift their normal rotations in 2022 
with fertilizer prices nearing all-time highs and concerns about availability issues this fall and especially next spring. Pioneer field agronomist Jared Rolston covers South Central South Dakota. He says he anticipates some acreage changes, especially more soybeans, less corn. Now this is important. However, Rolston doesn't anticipate huge shifts on any one operation as many farmers are locked into rotations. Now we're going to pause on that one for a second because what he's talking about is due to crop rotations or soil rotations. And we had the Dust Bowl in this country because we had a lot of inexperienced farmers moved out west. They plowed over grassland and they just overplanted their crops. They didn't pay attention to the health of their soil. They just tried to extract as much money out of the dirt as they could, as fast as they could, especially with the boom in commodity prices in the 1920s. However, when the Depression hit, they were driven to farm more and more and more. The next thing you know, the soil was just exhausted. You add a drought on top of that, and all the crops died off, and then we had some high winds blowing across the Great Plains, and they actually lost their topsoil. Millions of pounds of topsoil was just blown across the country and out to sea. All right, It was a lesson learned, and if you don't pay attention to the health of your soil, you're going to put yourself out of business. Now, U.S. farmers have gotten much better better at maintaining the health year over year and long-term forecasting since the Dust Bowl. So what Rolston is talking about here is he doesn't anticipate a massive shift from corn over to soybeans because a lot of farmers don't follow market prices as closely. They're more concerned about the long-term health of their soil. Okay. I just wanted to touch on that real quick. All right. Reading on, he says there are agronomic issues that can arise from planting beans on beans, and so it isn't something he recommends. Ralston says in the Western Corn Belt, many farmers also have the advantage of including wheat in their rotation, which may also be a profitable option for 2022 as well. Pioneer field agronomist Larry Osborne is working with growers in East Central South Dakota on management strategies to combat the high cost of fertilizer and says they're faced with some tough decisions. So what they're saying here is it's not just as simple as going saying we're going to plant soybeans instead of corn because there are so many other factors that need to be considered such as the long-term health of the soil and that there's other crops such as wheat that are kind of less fertilizer intensive than corn a little bit more so than soybeans that may be an alternative but in a nutshell it's safe to say what we're looking at in the united states is less corn planted next year more soybeans more wheat may not be a huge shift but remember these commodities very small differences in crop yields can result in big swings in prices. And I want to give a shout out to a couple of guys on Twitter who spotted this the other day. First, we're going to at Trader Ferg, who writes, fertilizer accounts for as much as 70% of the production cost of rice and corn. The latest surge in fertilizers will raise costs for many farmers in Asia and risk pushing up prices in the region where the vast majority of the world's supply is produced and consumed. And I also want to give credit to one Mr. Trent Norris at Trent Norris 13 on Twitter who wrote anyone familiar with ticker corn. What Trent is referring to here is an ETF that tracks corn futures. And here we are. Now let me preface this by saying I am still in cash raising mode. Okay. And I've been talking about that for a couple of weeks. So I'm not looking to make this trade at least not right now. Um, I am still raising cash as I believe there is a market correction on the horizon stemming mainly from the situation in China and the Evergrande collapse over there. Uh, however, this is one interesting thesis and I just throw these at you guys, all right? And I also want to say I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own research, your own DD. Arrive at a decision that's right for you based on your unique situation. Okay, now that I have CY'd my A, let's talk about this fund. First of all, Ticker Corn, what are their top holdings? If you zoom in over here in Yahoo Finance, they will tell us that this fund holds December, May, and June corn futures and also has American government obligations. That's basically uh, treasury bonds. Okay, so this fund invests in corn futures and it's spread out across multiple maturities. And that will obviously change over time. Now, there's one thing I want to talk about with this fund. You need to be very careful with commodity ETFs because commodity ETFs are the victim of contango. Contango is the value of the fund decaying over time because these are constantly rolling over into futures contracts. And futures are typically declining in value as time goes because there's a time element built into it. And you can see that on these trends. Just want to zoom out here to like a five-year or a maximum chart, right? This is not a very good looking long-term chart. So this is not 
a long-term investment. This is not the kind of fund that you want to buy and put in your portfolio and leave it there for 10 years, okay? Because this happens. This is your contango eroding away your value over time. So funds like this are really just for swing trades. These are not long-term investments. I want to emphasize that. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's move me out of the way and look at the year it's had. See, like most commodities, corn had a pretty good first half of the year, and then it peaked around May, June time frame, and it's been kind of trading sideways ever since. Now, what would I be looking at here as far as the trade goes? We have a pretty nice little uh, flag pattern developing here. Let's put a line there. Let's put a line down here. So I would be looking for any breakout of this channel, a retest of this line, and then a move up. So we're kind of right at that level right now where this is an interesting trade. Now again, I'm still in cash raising mode myself, but if I saw this one break out and have a successful retest of this line here, I may consider this one. Now last week I did a video about the fertilizer shortage causing an increase in food prices, and I mentioned another ETF called DBA that I was watching. And that is this guy here. Let's move me out of your way. And during that video, I had mentioned I was watching the 1945 level as an important level. Now let's get my line out of here. And you can see we failed to retake that 1945 level. Let's get me out of the way. You can see we failed to retake that 1945 level. I'm still watching that as an important technical level. Uh, one thing I will point out about DBA, and again, we're going to look at the holdings in the ETF. Again, we're going to get me out of the way. This one holds treasury bonds, coffee futures, corn futures, sugar, and soybeans. So again, this DBA fund, this is kind of an average. Um, this invests in a broad spectrum of commodities. If you were wanting to invest in the trend of less corn being planted, more soybeans being planted, and thus a reduction in the supply of corn, then something like your tipple, ticker symbol C-O-R-N would be a better trade. Anyways, again, guys, I just want to say I am not making any of these trades myself. These are just ones that I'm keeping an eye on. These are just trends I'm watching. Um, I just throw these ideas at you kind of get the gears turning upstairs and, and some things that you might do. Again, I am in cash raising mode because I believe assets are going to be on sale in the not too distant future. I'm not really sure what's going to come out of China, um, but I know it's going to be big. Whatever happens in China, it's, it's definitely going to spill over into the States to one extent or another. And I want to have that dry powder. I want to have that cash ready to rock on the side when that happens. So long story short, much higher fertilizer prices is going to disproportionately affect corn farmers versus soybean farmers because corn is the more fertilizer intensive crop that may result in less corn getting planted and more soybeans getting planted. That could mean lower soybean prices, higher corn prices. And that ticker symbol CORN is one possible way you might be able to invest that trend. Guys, I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. It really helps me out. I'd be forever in your debt. Until next time, live small and dream big.